Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse and to yet another episode in our One and Done series. This is a series where we look at those acts or artists who only put out one release, maybe two at the max. Tonight's victim is Hugh Thrall. This album came out in 1982. We're going to take a look at it and we're going to get the panel on this. So without any further ado, let's take a look. Throw those horns up. It's time for Grant's Rock Warehouse. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is probably the latest show we've ever done. It's 10 p.m. here in beautiful central Ohio, and I don't think I've ever done a show at 10 p.m. I'm barely awake, so we're just going to give it a shot. I want to welcome the panel tonight. We've got Byron, Ernesto, Peter Kerr, and John the Music Nut. And we're here to talk about Hugh's Thrall. This is part of the one and done series that, well, we've probably done, what, four episodes, three episodes. Actually, there's a Shadow King episode that hasn't been released yet (laughs) because I'm backlogged. So, but yes, this is part of that series. This will, well, see if we do this live, folks, you don't have to wait. So anyway, we're looking at Hugh's Thrall. Everybody, um, people might not be familiar with this band. They did one record. You've got former Deep Purple vocalist and Trash P, say that fast, Trash P. Trapeze. Trapeze. Thank you. (laughs) Glenn Hughes. And then you've got Pat Thrall, who played with Pat Travers for what? He was on like three or four albums. Yeah. A great guitar player. So they, 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 they put out this record in 1982. But this is the only record they ever did. I don't know. We're going to take a look at it and see how it uh, stacks up. Is this a worthy record? Is this something that you may want to seek? Because on this channel, we like to talk about things that, well, no one's talking about Hughes Thrall. So we are today. So I want to welcome the panel. And we're going to just start out with John the Music Nut and then go to Peter Kerr and then Ernesto and then Byron and come back to me. So let's start out. John the Music Nut, what do you think of this record? And I guess we can kind of do it like a a dark horse episode i guess give your rating at at the end and we'll just compile all of it so right. uh, welcome to the show and why don't you start us off okay thank you so much grant of course peter it's great to be on a show with you on a panel because usually <laughs> yeah. it's just you thank and you. i good to be here yeah yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely awesome and it's 10 p.m eastern standard time here oh it in, is in okay. beautiful monroe township pennsylvania wyoming county that's right yeah it would be you might hear some horses in the background unless they're sleeping. But anyway, <laughs> it's true. You've been listening. Oh, it's true. It's darn true. So, Hugh Straw. Now, I wanted to buy this album for a long time. And when my friends asked me to be on this, I'm like, well, now I got to buy the album. And we were talking about doing this show a couple months ago. So yeah. I've had a lot of time to digest this. And when I listen to this album, I'm like, we talk Dark Horse albums. This is a Dark Horse album of the album-oriented rock genre right here. This is very good. When the songs are going through your head during the day, after you just played it the night before, then you know you got a good record right there. It's all about the songs. So you got Pat Thrall here on guitar and guitar synthesizer. You got Glenn Hughes here on vocals and bass, and he's a very underrated bassist. Let's just get that out of the way. We always hear about how great a vocalist that he still is, but he's also a very good bass player. And on drums here, you had Gary Ferguson, Frankie Benali, before he hit big with Quiet Riot, and then later on did work with Wasp and did a lot of session work. And you have Gary Malibur, who did a lot of session work, but he's also, he probably is best known for being in the Steve Miller band for a long I time. I was just going to say, yeah, he's a, he played with Steve Miller for years. Mm-hmm. And you got Peter, if I hope I'm pronouncing it, Scheiss on keyboards, who is featured very prominently on here. Yeah. Now, what do who what do Hugh Straw sound like? To me, they remind me of a grittier version of Survivor. Now, a lot of people, casual fans, would think of Survivor as a pop band. They really aren't a pop band. They were more AOR, but they just had 
the search is over with such a huge ballot for them that I think it it changes some perceptions on them. But I mean, Survivor, their best can really rock. And I find that here with their new wave meets hard rock sound. Now, and and we also have Andy Johns producing this and Andy Johns is resume we could talk about that for a couple hours let's just put it that way as a producer and more so as an engineer but let's go to the songs i got your number is a great strong rock which is very driving glenn sounds great He's screaming on the on the choruses this is a cool tune the guitars and keyboards blend perfectly very strong opener now to look in your eye this is more of a pop song, but very catchy, very memorable, great chorus. Glenn, again, sounds very well, sings very well on it. Keyboards are up in the mix. I mean, it, it's definitely more pop than rock. It's very good. It does remind you a little of Survivor, like like a high on you, but the, the synths aren't quite as up in the mix. Now, Beg, Borrow, or Steal is the next track. That was the single that hit number 79 on the Billboard. Hot 100. This is a cool tune because it's very new wave and it meets funk because the bass is really heavy in the mix on the verses. You hear this song and you can see women coming out in the dance. It's a memorable song and I think it should have did more than it than it, it did. And I'll say that about a few other songs here as well. Where did the time go? That's more pop. Another good song. Um, the keyboards are heavy in the mix, but Again, you got a really well written song here, very good chorus. Muscle and Blood is heavier. It's got a great riff, but it's the space between the notes and the riff. Peter, you and I have talked about that, about riffs. It's the space between the notes and the riff that make give it that edge. That's what you got on Muscle and Blood. Hat Brawl's solo on here is, is a killer, it's a very strong track. My favorite song is the next track, Hold Out Your Life. Yeah. Frankie Benali plays like a monster on this, and I always say that about Frankie Benali. But this rocks like hell, but it's got the very, um, the verses are very solemn. I mean, they're, they're very quiet, and then it rocks out in the pre chorus, and then when it gets into the chorus, it really rocks out. Another great solo here from Pat. Excellent solo here, actually. Who will you run to? To me, this is how did this not be a big hit on AOR? I hear this, I'm like, God, this sounds like would have fit right in next to Rainbow, next to Foreigner, next to Billy Squire at that time. This would have fit right in. This is a gem of a track. Another strong one. Coast to Coast is very reflective. This is the this is the ballad. And mostly a lot of acoustic guitar on this. Great vocal performance again by Glenn. Strong track. And First Step of Love, this is kind of a tour de force because you're thinking, okay, they're going to end with a ballad again because it's, it's keyboards and just Glenn, and then it builds in momentum, and then it gets um, really rocking at the end. Soaring chorus, a lot of, a lot of great uh, interplay here. It's a strong closer. When I um, it, I listen to this album, I'm like, how did it not get bigger? Well, Glenn and Pat were having a lot of drug issues, and that prevented them from being a, doing a long tour. They only did a handful of dates. I listen to this, I'm like, how are they not now opening for Billy Squire? Because th if they were doing that and AOR was catching this, this would have went gold easy, probably platinum. I mean, it sound it's the sound, um, some of the synths are a little dated. It does feel like 1982, but it's very well recorded. Glenn Johns was a master engineer. And it's very well recorded. I give this an eight, but if I had a little more time with it, it like the rest of my friends are going to talk, have had with it, I would probably rank it higher. But at this point, I'm going to give it an eight, and I am so glad that I picked this up, and thank you for inviting me on. Well, of course.
We couldn't do it without you, John, for God's sakes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, let's look. What did Rand say? Rand said he bought this on vinyl in 1982 and on CD in 89. Huge fan. You know, if Rand likes it, then, well, everyone should like it. Hey, Rand. Are you Rand? 10 is a 10 for me. Hey, hey DC, how are time. you? Nice. There he is. You know, and Star, you know, Star, like nice far. to see you. Mark, hey, we got the Netherlands. Hello, Mark. I like that. Mark's a big fan of this album. He thinks this is awesome. Uh, Dan, this is was better than Automatic Man. I've yeah. got those Automatic I Man did. albums. I don't think I ever, I've ever played them though. I got them, got them for like a dollar. I think they were a quarter. One of the best one-offs ever. Yep. Agree with John's grittier survivor tag. Well, there you go. Thank you, Daryl. DC ain't this ain't live as it's live. We are live, John. <laughs> live. Uh in living color. He said this one guitar part was lifted right off automatic man. Can't remember the track though. Anybody know about that? I gotta pick that out. I haven't heard automatic man in a long time. Yeah. No, no one really talks about that either. Making a no, note. No. All right, let's throw it over. Thank you, John, by the way. Let's throw You're over welcome. to Peter Kerr and get his uh, thoughts on the record at a rating out of 10. Yeah, I first heard this album in the late 80s. I used to read Kerrang! magazine, and a lot of the, um, um, you know, whether it was Nikki Six or Ronnie James Dio, a lot of the musos um, would refer to this album Um and say, look, this is a kind of a masterpiece. So I, I listened to it, and I've got to agree, I think this is Glenn Hughes's finest work outside Deep Purple, bar none. It's a masterpiece. Um, the thing that was holding this band back was substance abuse. And if you look at, look at the album cover, they're coke-eyes. <laughs> they're glazed. <laughs> well. So, um Okay. It's just the biggest uh, what if question is against this album because they, they should have been huge because all the material is just so, so strong. The playing is fantastic. The songwriting is sublime. Pat Frail, his guitar playing, like um, the look in your eye, um, you know, that lead break is just absolutely um, to die for. Um, look, I think that the the flaws in this album, which are a minor blemish, is Andy John's production. I don't quite agree with you, John. I think the okay. um, production is a little bit trebly. It needs okay. a little bit more bottom end, a little bit more on the bass, because Glenn Hughes is a fantastic bass player. He's a naturally gifted musician, and I've read interviews where he says he doesn't he doesn't practice. Uh, Richie Blackmore used to say it all the time that he used to be very envious of Glenn Hughes. He'd just turn up and he'd play and just get into the mode. He doesn't. He's just one of those very gifted musicians and wow. just gets in the right. moment. Um, but, you know, I just think the production, it's just a little bit trebly and very much um, of the times because a lot of the production was to try to get it into AM radio. But... Yeah, look, all the songs are in place. It's just wonderfully crafted songs, but it's I just think it was their substance abuse issues that were really holding things back. Um, they did a, a, a brief tour with Santana, I think, uh, John, that you alluded to, but I agree. If they um, got on a billing with, like, a, a Survivor or a, a Billy Squire, they would have gone to the, the next level 100%. I've seen Glenn Hughes a few times. He always puts a couple of these songs in the song list, like Muscle and Blood, um, Hold Out Your Life. Anyway, I think this Hughes and Frawl album is um, absolutely outstanding. It's probably Glenn Hughes's finest moment outside Deep Purple, and I'd give it a probably a nine. All right. We'll go with that. Um, I'm just curious. Sure. Peter or at anybody on the panel, uh, I try to remember back. I don't remember this getting much promotion. I don't remember this really getting any airplay. I'm just curious. It seems like, look, we've already got an eight. We've got a nine. It seems yeah. like this record has a lot going for it. And considering the time period, 1982, it fits right in, but there are hooks. 
So it might be a little bit trebly, but still think a think radio fit right yeah. on radio. And it's it's on the Epic label, and yeah. I think um, a number of their clips apparently did uh, get shown on MTV, but okay. it's it's a big mystery. Well, how did it do in Australia? Do you remember? Zero. Any? It did nothing. How did you and, get turned on to the record? Kerrang! Magazine, as oh, I said at the right. start of it. Yeah. So just reading. It, it, this is kind of a muso musos band. You just sort of reading interviews with other musicians, heavy metal musicians or hard rock musicians, and they said, "What albums are you listening to?" And they'd always come back to Hughes Frail. Yeah. Uh, Speaking but, of Kerrang! There you go. In LA, they did play um, the "I Got Your Number." They used to play it on the radio in the '80s. It was really popular and stuff. And you know, it's Glenn Hughes. What else? You know. DC's a big fan. He likes the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dan, on Saturday, I've played Balance on my Saturday show. Balance is another <laughs> band that no fault of their own really should have been more popular. It's true. I would put ba Balance kind of in this same genre right. as Hughes Thrall. Yeah, good. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. Bag borrows through my favorite track. Excellent. That that should have been a hit because that's got yeah. like a new wave feel to it. It's got a heavy mm -hmm. synth. Um, mm -hmm. That could have charted. Yeah. You just it's you just never know what's going to take off though. But like I said, I don't remember any real promotion of this. It just yeah. came out and. That I was remember it. hearing. <clears throat> I heard something off of this when it first came out. It was either. I got your number of the look in your eye. I heard it a few yeah. times on the radio. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know who that, who they were. Then I discovered Glenn uh, maybe a year or two later, really. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, Oh, that's that huge thrall. So I, I picked this up probably 84. Mm -hmm. Somewhere yeah. around this. I've had it a long time. Yeah. If, if the band doesn't tour, then you, they've got no hope. I mean, if they only did about three or four uh, run, you know, sort of uh, concerts with Santana, mm -hmm. the album's going to die. So I think well, that's one of the major factors. It no could, tour. It's definitely probably one of the one of the issues with it, you know? It's Even though then. it got great reviews. I'm just saying, it got great reviews back in the day. Yeah. All right, I think I, cool. bought, this, I, think oh. I bought this the same day I bought Whitford St. Holmes. Go figure. Oh, okay. Go figure. <laughs> Those two, yeah. you know. So... Is that just the regular epics? What do you have, Byron? The epics? I've got there? the original epic bo um, Boulevard. Boulevard. Epic. Yeah, I've I got the rock. The you do too? Yeah, I've I got the, the rock candy ones, what I've got. And you remember when Rand said something about the onion cover? It mm -hmm. does feel like, like an onion cover. It's got a weird texture on it. Yeah. Mm. I don't know what. I don't know. I mean, I think that's what he means. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Dan said, this was in my wheelhouse at age 14 because I knew Thrall from, you know, Pat Travers already, and I just knew Burn from Purple. Yeah, well, that's right in your wheelhouse, you know. I, I that's, Like I said, I'm surprised it didn't take off. All right, Peter Kerr, I want to thank you for that. That was great. So we've got an eight and a nine. Things are looking up. All right, Ernesto, what's your thoughts on this and your uh, rating out of 10? Okay, the first time I heard this, I walked in a really – really well-known record store called Aaron Records out in Hollywood. And uh, the owner was playing Muscle and Blood. And when I heard Muscle and Blood, I was like, wow, it was hitting hard. And it sounded so good on the stereo. And I was like, I asked the owner, I go, who is this? And he goes, oh, it's a uh, Houston Thrall. And I go, oh, wow. And it was like, man, I got to get that record. Man. It was so good, you know? And I had bought the vinyl back then, and I started listening to the tracks and stuff, and I got your number, the look in your eye, Beg, Borrow, and Steal. All those tracks were like good, good songs. Very AOR, you know? And when we were younger kids, we didn't know what AOR was, you know? We, didn't, we were just, we just loved the music, you know? Right. And it was like coast to coast. I mean, we know coast to coast from Trapeze, you know? I talked about it before. Love that song. That's like a beautiful ballad. And First Step of Love, another hard-hitting song. It comes in. Man, I'm just telling you. Great album. Great production. The cover is cool. I love that cover. You know? And 
something about this album other than the fact that you know the songs are great song you know Glenn, what, what can you say about glenn hughes that everybody's already said you know what i mean right. i mean if you want to really hear these songs you got to go pick up burning japan live burning japan live is him at his best and then he's playing these songs and it's an amazing album, man. You got to pick that one up if you want to hear these songs live. Mm-hmm. But um, other than that, I mean, everybody said everybody had good points. John had good points. Peter had good points. Can't really say much, but give you my score. And there you go. Oh my God, that album right ah. there. Look at look at Byron that album. going into the into the archives <laughs> and pulling stuff out. That is one of the best live albums he's made covering songs from this oh my god badass right there the best nice. but um everybody said everybody had good remarks about it so i'm just going to be honest with you i'm going to give it a nine Holy yeah, man. Well done. It yeah well done that's excellent uh, let's see what people are saying uh DC I read back in the day that Pat Travers said he got a bit lazy when Pat Thrall joined the band. He let Thrall <laughs> take the line share the lead guitar and on most Travers albums. Well, oh, wow. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I mean, he's a demon guitarist. You know, he's... speaking of that, he doesn't really get much credit nowadays. No, he doesn't. And his guitar work on Hughes Thrall is just absolutely outworldly yes yeah, yeah, muscle right. and blood man you put that in oh. the stereo loud you crank yeah, that yeah. sucker i mean boy it's gonna sound yeah. oh my god and look at i'm not promoting drugs or anything but man these guys on drugs they sound awesome <laughs> well <laughs> um, I'm doing yeah, as well, <laughs> well Damn. There, there is there are some albums that just come out of the box out of chaos and um like come taste the band is an example. I love that yeah. album, Deep Purple. Yeah. Tommy Boland was just in heroin and cocaine addiction. Right. You had Glenn Hughes. And what she came out with is arguably one of my top five Deep Purple. So right. there can be the most adverse circumstances and creativity comes out of it, you know? Right. Yeah. Somehow. True. So Mike True. says the first time he heard the record was about 10 years ago and there was no promotion in the States. All right. Well, thanks for backing that up. Yeah, I don't remember anything. If this album probably went right into the cutout bin. I'm surprised they even put it out on CD. When did no, that come was, out on CD? Like in the 90s, maybe? It was or? it was it was out there, Grant. It was just that, you know, it was only one or two songs that were on the radio in, in California, in LA. You know? Yeah. But I, I bet you it ticks over. I bet you word of mouth, there's enough yeah. copies that keeps it in circulation mm-hmm. um, right. every year. Um but um yeah. <laughs> but you know what also I heard? That what? when people go into produce, uh, pr- producing and engineering, that they pick this record, yeah. okay, this record as a staple, as a saying, this is how you produce a fine record. That's what, what I heard. Mm. Well, that, that contradicts my uh, assessment of Andy <laughs> Everybody's John's, going uh, against Peter Curry. Right? Toppy. Um, no, I know. Well, no, it also could be the mastering, though, depending yeah. on what version yeah. you have, too. Right. I don't know. I what? just think that they had the mirror and the Coke, and he moved the, the dials up to the treble true. a bit That's too true. much. Oh, I want more forward. of myself. I want more. I want more. But let me tell you, Glenn Hughes doesn't – I mean, he's, his voice is amazing on this. He's an amazing. incredible vocalist. And the fact incredible. that he's at his age now, he sounds just as good. Yeah. Well, Still you know why strong. I think he That's sounds amazing. as good as he – you know why I think he sounds as good as he does now? Because he basically didn't tour for between when Purple finished up in 76, mm-hmm. he did play me out. He didn't virtually tour to like the early 80s. So his voice has been preserved. He's not like a David Coverdale that did a mm-hmm. thousand um, concerts and just flogged his voice and he's got no voice anymore. He's kind right. of because he did so little live work for like 10 years and he was getting into the drugs and all that circle of Hollywood. Um, that's why I think he's got a preserved voice. Yeah. I think the drugs preserved him. Well, look at Keith Richards. <laughs> he should be dead, but he's walking around. Well, you know what? He outlived uh, Charlie Watts for God's sakes. Glenn, he'll, hit he'll hit a hundred. He'll hit a hundred. Charlie passed on though. You know, what? Charlie Watts passed on. 
I know, but Keith Richards oh, okay. is just going to... Oh, Keith Richards. Oh, okay. but just like just stay, away from those, stay away from those coconut trees in Fiji. Yeah, exactly. That's, that almost killed him. <laughs> you heard that story? Climbed up, got a coconut tree, and it hit him on the head. <laughs> <laughs> what about that Magic no album from... In 80... What album was... That's, 80... uh, that's a good album, Yannick Gears. I've, yeah. never, I've never heard that yeah, record. A good album. A solo album. Yeah, Gillen. You know, Martin's all over that. He loves all that that yeah. stuff. Yeah, Gillen's yeah. great. That's a different type. Very different type of vocalist. Very yeah. different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very different. Very different. All right, so we've got an eight, a nine, and a nine. I'm going to th thank you, Ernesto, for your review. Very nice. Excellent. Um, DC said you had the comment of the night. So there Thank you go. You Congratulations. You know, pick up your award supported. at the end of the show. <laughs> All right, Byron, what you got? All right. So uh, I probably mentioned before that Glenn is my favorite singer of all time. So I probably oh. know too much about him that, you know, more than I should. But um, I'll be honest, I think Peter said the same thing. This probably is the best thing he ever did, maybe other than with Purple. I think this is probably even better because, you know, on Purple, he only got to sing, you know, a little bit here and there. But, um, you know, uh, they say the same thing about Holds Alan Holdsworth, that his best stuff is when he was working with other people, you know, instead of doing his own. I mean, I've got a lot of Glenn solo albums and they're good, but I don't think they're as good as this. Didn't he put out a disco record? No, it's no, not. Yeah, no, I have. No. Yeah, that it's Ernesto's the one who keeps promoting that. No, I keep promoting that. I, that's you, Byron. Yeah, God, I got it over God. here. Yeah, four on the floor. That's, not, that's his. It's funk version. His. It's, it's funk, funk infused. Funk infused. It okay. sounds like disco. Where do you but, think uh, disco comes from? <laughs> but uh, yeah. you know. Anyway. So yeah, I, I think this is the, probably the best thing he ever did. Um, but, you know, so yeah, prior to this. Um, you know, he, after Purple, he did a solo album, uh, Play Me Out, and it didn't do a whole lot. But uh, then he got hooked up with Gary Moore around 79 or 80 because um, Gary had signed to Jet Records. And um, Sharon Osborne or Arden was basically uh, managing Gary at that point, from what I understood. And uh, they had to let Glenn go because he was just so jacked up on the coke. She's like, you got to get your shit together, she said to him. So, hell you know, um, so Gary ended up doing G-Force with some other guys. But then, uh, you know, so then shortly after that, Glenn hooked up with Pat Thrall. And, you know, we all we know Pat was with Travers and Automatic Man and Go, which is right mm -hmm. there. Um, but um, so, yeah, so they got together and they did this album. And, uh, you know, they did a little tour with uh, – Tommy Aldridge on drums and Jesse Harms on keyboards. But like we said, it didn't, it wasn't a real long tour and uh, they were probably doing too many drugs and they weren't really ready to go out on the road. Um, but I think it's a great sounding album for the most part. Uh, the songwriting is really good. The vocals are outstanding. Of course. Uh, I really like Pat's guitar playing on here. Um, you know, I wouldn't describe this though as like a, like a his guitar playing great, but I wouldn't say this is just a totally guitar dominated album. No. You know, at times no, on some either. songs it is, but on other songs it's his guitars are just kind of laid back and uh, a lot of keyboards and whatnot. Yeah. But um, you know, some of the songs are heavy, some are real mellow. You got some fast, long, slow songs. Uh, some are kind of funky at times. Some are soulful. Um, and we know we've talked a lot about the songs. Uh, I'm probably not going to go through all of them here, but uh, you know, I got your numbers just great. What I, what I like about that is the guitar playing isn't like typical eighties guitar playing. You're not really hearing just like a, a bunch of uh, uh, bar chords or, you know, uh, you know, five chords or whatever. It, it's just different. It's, it's not, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's a little funky, but then he's got like these uh, delay effects to get these certain sounds going. Uh, you know, it's just not your typical guitar work. And then he helped rip off some great guitar solos here and there too. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just love this album. And uh, uh, like you guys have mentioned, Big Borrow and Steel, Muscle and Blood, 
uh, coast to coast. Uh, I love Hold Out Your Life, though. That somebody else said they really like that one. I love it because <laughs> that that's kind of funky at times, and it's Nine. it's. It's fast, but it's not real heavy until you get to the choruses. And then, um, you know, it, the great guitar solo. Glenn's vocals are just incredible on here. A couple songs he's like, uh, first step of love, like I think Ernesto was saying. He's just he's just going for it on the vocals and he's screaming. You know, you get the, those purple type screams that he used to do. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to give this a nine. Wow. Um <laughs> Got a lot of nines. I like it a lot. Now, actually, too, uh, some of you have the uh, rock candy, you said, because there's two bonus yeah. tracks. On oh, I do. Candy, I do. Right? Well, I don't have that, but, I mean, I have those songs. I've got everything somewhere on the hard drive, but uh, uh, there's a couple tr bonus tracks on there. One was uh, Still the Night, which was actually re-recorded on this Phenomena album. Yeah. Great album. You probably heard. That's a whole, that's a whole other uh, show right there. Yeah. Oh, somebody made, didn't you do that once, Peter? A show yeah, up? I did concept albums. That was That's my right. pick. I love that album. I knew I saw you talk yeah. about that. Yeah. And he also it. recorded it on this uh, John oh, Norman album, which is a good style. Album too. He yeah. sings on this whole album. It's great. Yeah. So, um, mm. uh, other things, I guess I'll show. So, this Glenn Hughes um, feel. Now, that's uh, a soulful album. Very, very soulful, funky. Stevie Pat Wonder. Rawls on this on a, two or three tracks at least. Right. What year did that come out? Ninety-five. Okay. So, I like this album, but it's not real heavy. It, like honestly, no. it's kind of funky and soulful. Yeah. Like, he's, he, he was kind of tired of doing the metal thing on the prior yeah. albums, so he wanted to get back to doing funk. He's always talked about he wants to get more funky and but then he'll do it for a little while and then he goes back to his hard rock roots because i think that's where the money is for what, him. what's that album the one where he's sitting on the chair from now on from now yeah, on that's yeah that's like him with like the guys from europe right yeah that's, that's awesome. kind of a very bon jovi-esque album but i don't yeah, like it it's, it's, it's a good it's album good. yeah um it's got some sort of swedish got, backing band or something they, i've got some demos too from uh, after they toured and they started working on a second album. Um, mm. It's got about six songs on it. I don't know if you guys have heard any of it. Actually, uh, Still the Night's on there. And then the, the two bonus tracks that were on the Rock Candy are on that. And then there's four other tracks um, that have not been released. Um, mm. Oh, so they did uh, a song for the, you remember the Dragnet movie? Yeah. They yeah. yeah. did a song yes. on that together called City of Crime. Yeah, which just kind of got a lot of rapping in it by Dan Aykroyd and uh, Tom Hanks, but you yeah. get Glenn and Pat playing. Now, um, don't forget, he did a he did a song with the KFI or KMFI. KMF. Yeah, you know what time is love? That was the number one hit. Right. Yeah, what number one hit in the UK, and he was known as the voice of rock, and that's yeah. sort of stuck um, with him ever since. But I love that song. That's a great dance track, and I've also got. Um, it's an MP3 of when they were on Rockline. It was September 27th, 1982, where they were, you know, did Rockline, they were interviewed. I don't know if you know no. that show, Peter. It was an American thing where people no. could call in and ask questions. So yeah. that's kind of interesting to listen to. I think Glenn was yeah. just totally on coke that night, too, because yeah. his, his answers to the like questions that? don't... <laughs> but his answers to the questions don't make any sense half the time, so I think he was on coke that night. Yeah, uh, there you but, go. Look at those eyes. Those eyes. <laughs> They're looking at you. That live album, I'm telling you, show it. That album, that live one, the Japan one, man, that is so good. You guys got to pick that up if you have a chance. If you like Glenn Hughes, pick that album up. Yeah, this okay. is the tour for the From Now On album, basically. Oh, and we, man. And we, a quick shout out, Hughes Turner. That's a good one, yeah, too. Yeah. Collaboration, yeah. Jolene yeah. Turner and you Glenn did a, Hughes. You did a show on those. Yep, yeah. that's a good I one. Remember on that. I remember that. I see all those shows, so. Yeah, um, yeah, so I don't know. That's a pairing too. A very interesting pairing too. Yeah, but that's everything that I had. I had a lot of you know related. Well done in here. So excellent, excellent. I was just looking up. Dan had mentioned the artist Marcus, and I wasn't mm -hmm. familiar with. He said, "See, this is why I love these shows. I love going live because we always someone always throws out something." 
that maybe we've never heard before and we might get turned on to. So here's one. Rock mm. Candy. I just looked it up on Rock Candy. It is available. Uh, came out in 1976. Um, cover art's interesting. Interesting. Uh, I don't know, but what? I'm just curious, Dan, what is the Marcus album like? in the comments i'm just curious i love all these rock candy releases because i'm all into it because <clears throat> you know there are so many bands like <clears throat> aviary oh my god <laughs> a perfect record right. no one knows about it and they put out such great stuff so i'm interested in the marcus thing so just leave it in the comments of what it's like i'm just i might pick it up if it's great and you know we we don't <clears throat> We don't talk about when he was with Black Sabbath because nobody likes to talk about that album. But I think that album was great. I, I think, like that album too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't like his live performances though. Oh, well, yeah, I know. yeah, he was bad. Oh, that. that was yeah. bad. <laughs> it didn't help when the roadie smashed his nose in, and um, <laughs> like well, just there, before you're about to perform, things happen. Oh. Things happen. Yeah. But that's a, that Black uh, <clears throat> Seven Star is a great album. It just yeah. nobody really likes it because it's not. You know, there it is. It was supposed to be a solo album, and it became Black Sabbath. I'll put a question to you, Ernesto. I think that album is kind of bluesy. Yeah, it is. Black Sabbath bluesy. Yes. Just a little yeah. bit of a sneak yeah. preview, folks. Yeah, like a wheel's a total blues. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just saying. That's right a on. teaser. That's a teaser. Yeah, it's Th true. It's not a great Black Sabbath album, but it's a fantastic Tony Iommi album. Right, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. and then he let's don't forget about Fuse. He did an album with um, Tony and Paul Fuse. Yeah, singing he singing is just over the top. I love it. Yeah, Fuse. Uh, really, really good. I prefer the DEP sessions to the Fused album though. Mm. That one, yeah. they're both good though. So. Yeah, yeah. They should do another album together. To be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The story in Sabbath was apparently he was so bad they had a singer. In the curtains singing um oh, wow. like backup so it was and i think and then it was ray gillen he, he came on and too? saved the day yeah so <laughs> read read the glenn hughes um biography it's an interesting read he should not be alive yeah. seriously he was like dealing in so much drugs and um with really shady characters it's like a, a scene out of scarface well you know the real, oh, really? um, do you know the real story behind that about he had AIDS. Who did you know about that? Glenn Hughes had AIDS. No, no, no. That Ray guy, Ray. Ray, uh, Ray, oh, Ray. Oh, yeah, I know oh my god! Jeez, I thought we were breaking <laughs> some news here today. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you could hear a pin drop. <laughs> we could hear. We're like, yeah. gas. I was no, almost. <laughs> no, not Glenn Hughes. <laughs> Ray has AIDS. Oh, get me a yeah. Worked up. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's that's a different story. That's yeah. Um, Glenn Hughes was a, a muse to David Bowie. Did you know that yeah. they were living yeah. together um, for a while? Yeah. That's that's interesting. He, he's supposed. just sort of he's just like one degree of separation with all these famous people, and yeah, yeah, he so shouldn't be alive. Station, the station was written at Glenn Hughes's house. Did you guys know yep. that? Yeah, say that again. What? Station the Station was written pretty much all not all of it, but most of it was written at Glenn Hughes's house. Yeah. I didn't know that. And then um Bowie went to Berlin and then he just cut off all contact. So he's sort of like um yeah. It's one of those things. Shit happens. Well, yeah. They were all Maybe. doing all he needed things. to get away from the coke. <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> Let's go over and get some heroin. I don't know. Yeah. All right, kids. Well, this what is what we got. Us? Who gave someone else rated this? A nine, and I put it in our. I gave tally. it a nine. What did, what did George, you give gave it, nine? George gave it a nine, I believe. Okay, I put George's ranking yeah, in yeah. here too because if you, anybody in the chat, um, you've got a, a a number out of ten. Hey, let us know. DC gave it a ten. Oh wow! Yeah, early well, on yeah. the show. Well, I'll put that in there too. Grant, what do you think of this album? I'm exactly well. Let's see what he said. I don't know if I can come up with anything else that someone else hasn't already said, but the production. Well, I don't know. I'm like listening to the Rock Candy CD. Some of those are mastered, kind of 
questionably, but you can't not. Um, well, Mark's giving it a 10 plus. I don't think I can give it wow. a 10 plus. 11. Let's do 11. Yeah. I'll put 11 in there and see what happens. <laughs> you might break it. Um, but the songwriting, the production, I think, I, I think, I think I know what Peter Kerr's talking about. Like the, maybe it's the mastering on it. That's a little bit, I'd like to hear that, uh, Boulevard Epic CD that came yeah. out because that's probably just right off. It's probably not futzed with or anything. You know, yeah. the rock candy stuff's futzed with, but you cannot argue with the packaging on any of those CDs and the liner notes. But I listened past it. I think, I think Glenn sounds absolutely wonderful. Everything you said about Pat's guitar playing, it's really kind of hard to pigeonhole the guy. I mean, it's not a straight heavy rock record. You know, there's a lot of commercial potential here. Right. Um, I don't, I know it is in that survivor vein. So if you kind of dig that, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit grittier, I guess. But it's just as commercial. What? What's that? Somebody the blues this. album. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the blues album. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. I thought I'd pull it out. But, but uh, I don't know. I think it's one of those great records. You can, I don't know if you can, you might just be able to get it on rock candy. I don't even know if it's out on an LP form. Cause I know everybody buys vinyl now. Uh, no, no, it's not. Okay. But rock candy but, is still in print as far as I know. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, but I would give this, Oh boy. I don't know if I could, well, I did think, I, huh? Did you, hear, did you hear it? Did you hear the album again? Yeah. I okay. bought it when we were going to do it a month ago. Oh, okay. Um, ooh, what would I give it? I mean, there are records I like better. I can appreciate it. I think for a one-off record, and these guys are all out of their minds at this point. <laughs> it's impressive. It's an impressive. It's a, an impressive piece of work. I feel bad that it never got any promotion or anything. I think I don't know if I could give it a nine. I would give it a solid eight. I mean, I like other albums better, you know, of course. Yeah. But I think a solid eight. This record needs to be, it deserves another chance. So anybody watching this yeah. show and you haven't heard it, go out there. There, There's Ernesto hiding behind the CD. Go give it another listen. You know, you might be surprised. Check out the Rock Candy one. It might be, it's fine. And you get those two bonus tracks, so it's well yeah. worth having. <coughs> Mike Maybe. might have something. Maybe it should have. Well, you know, they're trying to capitalize on their names. Yeah. Trying to tie in, you know, to their previous incarnations or whatever you want to call. But I don't know. Would Glenn Hughes much of a name at this point? Probably not yeah, thought think... of very much. And Pat, when was the last Pat? Well, no, he was on Pat Travers' albums in like the early '80s. So yeah, yeah. he just Fashion had gotten burn. off of that. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I think it's well worth hearing. You know, yeah, Ernesto, I'm surprised, surprised you don't have. I'm surprised you don't have the eight track, Ernesto. I've been I've been looking for it. <laughs> I'm looking for it. Well, I needed that prop. I'm we down. need to reach out to Tim Durling and see if he's, yeah. he might. Yeah, have maybe it. Tim's got it, Ernesto. There you yeah, go. I, I should have had him on. <laughs> Trust me, I've been looking for it. It's really hard. Hey, Dan, I ordered that Blue Ash and the Explorers Club CD, and it should be here in a couple days. Oh. But yeah, that would be amazing. But I wish I could get this on vinyl again. I'm probably going to try to find yeah. it on vinyl. Well, probably secondhand. That's, that's yeah. where I picked up my copy. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it in the wild like on an album i, don't I had it on vinyl back in the day well i don't know yes, i haven't man. heard it all right so we got an eight a nine a nine a nine and a lot of nines a 10 and a an 11 and i'm going to give it an eight so and dan goucher gives it a 10 too because he said bo derrick for me there's okay. a 10 right. oh wow is that bo derrick 1980 or bo derrick 2023 i think he means 80 well, oh, I've seen her lately. She looks pretty that. good, yeah. <laughs> and I mean that in a non-sex, non-sexual, nah, 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 way. Right. Very neutral. She looks pretty good to me. Okay. Uh, great conversation. All right. So, what do we get? We was 
What what does the spreadsheet say? It says the spreadsheet is a nine point two. Wow! There you go. Nice. nice. The, yeah, the largest. This is an essential buy, seven. folks. I'd it's say yes. Yep. Thank you, DC. If you want to consider this a dark horse record, this certainly gets the stamp of dark horse. Right. So check it out. You might dig it. It's so what we're all about here is to turn people on to stuff that maybe you haven't heard before. And, and this don't do definitely drugs. qualifies. Don't do drugs, and folks. Listen to Peter Kerr and do not do drugs. All right. Dan bought this go. as a cutout. Hey, Grant, wouldn't this be a great box set? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> well, Ernesto's trying to push this topic of doing a box set. Yes, I think that'd be great. You just have the one CD. Well, no, you got some other stuff involved, but you know we can't talk about it right now. We're still thinking okay. about it. All right, all right, all right. Well, there's a lot of ideas in the pipeline, so I'll just right. leave that. Well, if, unless anybody else has anything else to add, we're giving this a nine point two. Us anybody? and the chat. Well, Byron? if you don't have anything else to add, I want to thank everybody for uh, popping up in the chat. Great to have you. I hope we didn't overlook anything. We'll do this again. I can't tell you what's up next, but there will be something up next. So I want to thank our panel for coming on. John, Peter, Ernesto, and Byron. It's been fun. It's always fun to talk music. So what can I say? Glenn Hughes had the hairspray and the <laughs> Coke. <laughs> Party on, everybody. Party on. All right, Great. kids. Well, you're welcome, Mark. Thanks for coming by. All right. On that note, let's sign off. I'm ready to go to bed. All right, gentlemen, we'll see you and have a good one. Good night. See you later.